All right, welcome back. Uh, this is Mr. Leitz, ACT Talk questions 5, 6, and 7 on uh, Monday, week 5. Here we go. Again, key is read the question carefully and slowly the first time so you don't have to go back and try to reread it again. If after you've read it, 10 seconds think time, allow yourself that time to just ponder. If you still really have no clue, Move on. Go on. Don't guess yet. Guess in the last five minutes of the ACT. Okay, so here we go. Uh, to use a highlighter, I'm going to try to move a little bit quickly and carefully. Sales for a business were $3 million more in the second year than the first. Okay, so you, if you had zero in the first, that's $3 million in the second. The sales for the third year were double that for what the sales were for the second year. Okay, if the third year sales were 38 million, what were the sales in millions for the first year? Okay, uh, what you're talking about here are three years, first, second, and third year. At the very end, you had 38 million dollars. It wants to know, really, how much did you start in the very beginning with? So we're actually going to go and set this up as if we were working backwards in time. I'm going to put over here, this is year three. Then we'll talk about year two here, and then we'll talk about year one back there at the very beginning. So we know at the very end we had 38 million. Now we know that there, to get back to the second year, what they're talking about is it was doubled into the third year. So you go back 38 divided by 2, 38 divided by 2, and you actually get 19 million. So in the second year you had 19 million. You go back another year, and it says that, well, the second year had three more million than the first year. So if second has 19, that means you've got to have 16 in the first. So you're done. Um, again, it's just a matter of working backwards, kind of work through it. it there's going to be questions like that where they just are kind of tricky because it's worded interesting. Okay, the next question is uh, geometry. Read through it carefully. Try to see what the pieces are as we're going. Um, so here we go. Let me set my pen. There we go. Ray E F. Ray E F. That's talking about this center one right there. It was constructed by starting with rays E D and E G. Okay, E D and E G. Got them. Okay. D and G. Okay, we got D and G are marked equidistant from E. That means this and that. D and G are the same distance from point E. And E and D are on the uh, yellow lines already marked, E, D, and E, G. Okay, the compass was, let's see then, the compass was then used to locate point F. That's point F. That one's out there. So that it's equal, to, so that the distance from distinct so that f is equal distance from d and g again it's saying equal distance that's really important here that it said that twice so basically you've got f is the same distance let me change the color again here we go so what we're saying is that f is the same distance from those two and e is the same distance from those two also okay so now what can we say what's the question actually asking um for all the constructions defined by the above steps, meaning however we built it based on that picture, what is the measure of these two triangles? That triangle, and to change the color so it's very clear, and this triangle. What's the measure of those two angles? What can you say is true? Well, we can immediately cross out some things if you're going for that, or you may be able to already go there. We know it's not that or this or this, and the reason you know that is because it never at any point talks about angles, creating a right angle, a 30 degree angle. It never talks about making a 90 degree angle anywhere, so those are out. Otherwise, um, it is that they are going to be equal, and you can just think about how they did that and understand the symmetry of how that piece is drawn. Okay, the last question we're going to go for is an abandoned mind. Mine. Okay, here we go. I'm going to bring back my marker. <clears throat> an abandoned mind frequently fills up with water. So I'm just going to sketch out a quick mine. There it is. An abandoned mine fills up with water, and we got some water in there. And it 
is uh, it needs to be pumped out before you can empty. So we got to take that water, we got to send it out before we can actually fill it up. The pumping mine is actually D feet deep. That's kind of interesting. And this equation right here tells you that a pump requires, that's your pump requirement right there. And you need, and this is the actual depth, 150 feet. Ooh, totally overdid that one. Let's see. Whoa, buggers. Totally botched that one up there, too. Let's see if I can put that back like it was. Nope, I don't think I can. Huh. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can get an eraser. And Nope, I don't even think I can erase that. No, I don't think I can even erase that mess. There. That's at least a little bit better. So we're going to keep on going and pretend that that little mess didn't happen. Um, interestingly, though, what we have here is this equation and this right here. And the question, how many gallons per minute? This, you know, it's like gallons per minute right there. That equation gives you the gallons per minute. So at that point, it's a substitution. Um, change my pen out. Um, you take the 150 and you put it into that equation and you're done. You substitute it in. So you've got 150 squared divided by 25 plus 4 times 150 minus 250. Now where that equation came from, I have no idea really, but at that point it doesn't really matter. But the these questions are interesting because they bury a lot of context and a lot of story, but it's all really irrelevant. Yes, it's real world, and yes, that's nice, but as soon as you notice that, wait, D is the depth. D, the depth, is the variable in this equation that changes, and they give you D, the depth. It's a substitution question, which happens really fast. So the quicker you can, I guess, read through that and just make it go, the better off you'll be. All right.